the Omega Logae of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling. This very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, of the indwelling, cherishing, and the nurturing one, in order to grow up day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to realize that there is an approval of the Lord of a God, the rats on approval upon them who walk in the Lord of a God as having the essence of Tamim. But those who are walking in the way of crooked, perverse, perverted, in the terms of distorted or twisted minds, Ikesh, because of their heart, they are always an abomination which has been called in the Hebrew To'eba which is a disgusting thing which they follow in a ritual sense the ritual sense of this unclean minds or Apostle Paul says we cannot even take the names of them in our mouth because of such disgusting things they are. In a ritual sense, they are of unclean idols, mixed marriages as well, and unclean food. In an ethical sense, these are of wickedness and abhorrence meant to say, which is nothing but a great disgusting thing detested thing which is utterly rejected and which is loathsome. So they that are forward heart are an detestable or abomination to the Lord our God. Either you take them in the ritual sense, they are unclean. What this world has been taken care today by the so-called prince of the power of the air. At the same time, in the ethical sense, they are wicked. Therefore, the Christ of the Lord of our God says, for particularly the church age believers, sanctify yourselves and look the wonders of the word of the Lord of our God. In 2 Corinthians 6, he teaches for us, separate yourselves from the world so that I can dwell among you and I can be among you and I can walk among you. The same thing what he writes for us. No wickedness, because where there is sin, there is no presence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling you. The great fact of filling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, plero, oh, where many people fail to understand this, and they talk in every mannerism of their emotional gibberish standards of human ecstasy. Plero, oh, is the controlling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that in Psalms 27, 4, we can read when Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controls us. It would diligently inquire upon your mind, heart, and soul to seek. As such, how forward you are walking in the Lord. 
and by that we mean in the hebrew the great word which could be called ikesh how twisted how distorted how crooked how perverse how perverted you are that's what lord god the holy spirit will diligently search in you so that you can align with the holiness of the lord our god in his image which you have been made says ephesians 4 20 through 24 but the problem with us is when we are not walking in the tamim nature of the lord our god in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit when we are not able to analyze the word from the original languages of the scriptures and teach the truth as it is, it has been found in Christ. This men have become the greatest twisted men of all time. Therefore, dear brethren, for what cause daily our Lord of our God is giving this spiritual manna, we need to be thankful to the Lord of our God in expounding for us. Wherewith Every believer have to be perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of the word of the Lord of a God day by day. If he hasn't grown up to such standards, then the failure of it we shall read in Lamentations chapter 5. Prior to that, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer and come back and look and consider the true reason what is Ludgard's ideal pastor teacher? Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we go to study these things, we pray, Ludgard, the Holy Spirit will enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. The things that have been reserved and kept for us, into the praise of His glory and His grace in eternity past, always have to begin with the word called as pastor teacher the failure of the right work of the pastor teacher we have read as Jeremiah 33 to well teaches for us the desolate places once again they need to be builded up they require the work of the pastor teacher the right title and the official title where you can call if Christ our Lord of a God is the official name of him then Jesus is the historical name. Likewise, pastor, if it is the historical name given or bestowed for every believer in Christ, it goes the official work of him as a teacher. And Ludgard's ideal pastor teacher is the one who always engages in a didactic ministry, daily teaching ministry. Don't ever think this is something new, what we are teaching. This has been written and kept in the mystery epistles of the church age. The prison epistles for you to be more specific. When Paul took the Jerusalem war and the thing pertaining to his 30 days of war on the day number 23. When he came to the temple, the riot broke out and the Roman soldiers followed by the centurion the Antonian Barak who came along who broke the riot thinking that if the Jews would kill even the Jews were having in their mind to realize the temple will be defiled if there was someone who did so they did not beat him to death where Apostle Paul should have been the one taking Bible classes and training them up that he has been out from the law not to keep the law when he bought the money because some morons who gave him an idea to say, people are thinking you are not able to keep the law, but his pain in Romans chapter 9, he says, at least by any means I have to take my people back to Christ, though I may be cursed. The point fulfilling over there, he came back to keep the law. And when he came to keep the law, on day number 23, still seven days more to go for the Nazarite war, what he has kept. The riot broke out and the Lord of a God, the man who was away from his geographical will and the operational will of Lord God the Father, put him back in the prison so that we can read and learn and understand this great mystery episodes, Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. The same thing what he writes in Colossians 4.3, for which cause I have been in bonds, in chains. To speak plainly the mystery doctrine of the church age, that's the great work of 2 Timothy 4.2, Kerusoton Lagan. 
And this mystery epistles, what has been given for us, teaches all the time to be aware about the Paralagid, Zomai, and Fitan Logia. The miscalculation of your right and true spiritual life in Christ. So in this mystery epistles, we find the right bona fide designation of a male believer, which has been given in the grace of the Lord of our God. This spiritual gifts being distributed, followed by the office. One word, it is pastor, teacher, copulative conjunction, chi, being replaced by hyphen. And whether these people believe it or not, and still they become prey for the things pertaining to false teachings, it is left in their own ignorance and arrogance of the evolution when they don't take up their cross and follow my Christ every day to become his disciple. Though the word says, if ever you want to be my disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. And how it is every day, every day, every day not weekly ones though we have been given much and we have much to communicate for you in the presence of Lord God the Holy Spirit day by day yet we fall short of time as in Hebrews chapter 11 we read in verse number 35 the time being insufficient because we know when we go to teach to you for more than one hour you cannot hold the TV or the YouTube ministry for more than five or ten minutes because you want to look upon those things which have been silly cut off into the terms pertaining to seconds so that your weaving men could be more the weaves could be more what you can be edified in 57 seconds what you could be edified in one hour or in one minute or two minutes of data doesn't the word say for us when Christ our Lord our God took the other three disciples with him to pray on the mount and he said couldn't you be with me for one hour when time is insufficient for us to teach so many things then how is it you can think you are completed your ministry from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 without proper exegeomai method of teaching in your pulpits without having proper isagogical background of that without having accurate exegetical thoughts on that without having proper dispensing technique of dispensations on that and you come love and you love to come and serve your ministry by saying that you have been called to be with the work of the Lord of our God Dear brethren, you are answerable to the Lord and not to me. Neither am I answerable to you, but only to the Lord. What is the right word of the Lord of our God we need to expound and teach to you every day? It is not we, we should open up our mouth and we can never open up our mouth. It is the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have learned to teach to you. He opens up our mouth so that you can come back and realize what has been found, the boundary being all the time for us, the Bible, the 66 books, and not in your translations, but in the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. That too with the proper dispensing technique of dispensation. The Israel, the church, the eschatological events after the rapture of the church. What were due to the Israel, what are now for us, and what we have, it is unique so that the other dispensations or the things to come can never understand, can never enjoy what we are enjoying today. The indwelling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit followed by Christ and followed by Lord God the Father. Making every believer's temple by default the Shekinah glory of the Lord our God so that we could be holy as Lord God the Father in heaven is holy. When Isaiah saw the great vision in chapter number 6, he realizes he is a man of unclean lips. He saw the vision, but we have been indwelt by that great Shekinah glory of the Lord of our God. Then how much more we need to be realizing that we are the sperm of Christ, 1 John 3, 9, and walk like Christ, 1 John 2, 5. And on part of that, when we have been given the greatest privilege of the pastor teacher, to make and to produce every believer perfect and complete because those who walk in the ikesh forward perverse crooked twisted methods for lord they are always an abomination that disgusting thing detestable thing but those who walk upright 
there is always an approval of the Lord of a God. So do you know what is that our Lord of a God approves if you're walking upright? At least do you know what is that you need to walk upright? Number one, if you're not a believer, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Number two, if you're a believer, make sure always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using the privacy of your priesthood, the confession of your sins through rebound, which is nothing but 1 John 1 9. Do you know what is Thamim in the sight of the Lord of a God for you as a believer? Daily take up your cross and follow Christ and become like Christ. The Sun Marfe conforming to the image of his dear beloved son, E.I. Khan, which has been given for us. In simple terms, he says, Show me the coin of a penny what you have. He says, Caesar unto Caesar and Lord unto Lord. What is that Lord unto Lord? We have the image of Christ being engraved upon us. What is that image of Christ we have been? The self-consciousness, the mentality, the evolution, the emotion, or in simple terms, whatever you have, the world could call in the terms called as five senses, or the word what we can call in the soul, the five facets of the soul. In every facet of the soul, from human viewpoint, you have to replace it with the divine viewpoint, and that's the greatest calling for us. So in order to replace from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, we cannot rely upon depending the rationalism or empiricism of this world. We cannot reason the things pertaining to this world. We have to be deaf and blind to this world. We have to talk about what the word says. We have to talk about what the word is. We have to believe and stand firm upon the word because our Lord of our God said with him, nothing is impossible. We said, he is the one who shall reign forever and forever. He said, when you abide in me, when you walk in me the great Tamim character being proved in you that's what he is talking about the Old Testament saints but when it comes to the New Testament saints he's talking to us to understand it is not just the Tamim nature it is the E icon which is nothing but the spirit and soul being made after the image of Lord God the Father that is for your inner man and your outward man which is having the old sin nature should be superior in your Tamim characters before the fall of Satan mentioned in Ezekiel 28 15 the way how it was more greater than that that's what we read in Psalms 23 when he says very specifically my cup overfloweth the cup represents the body which is Kose which is the unclean bird this cup should be filled with the great righteousness of the Lord of a God and the world should know the great fruit of the spirit of light mentioned in Ephesians 5 8 and 9 which is very specifically Aletia Dikaius Sune and Agate Sune. Aletia to your spirit, the indwelling spirit which has been given to you, the human spirit, not the Holy Spirit. The Tikaya Sune is what your soul now has to be changed from the righteousness of this earth into the divine righteousness of the Lord of a God. By that we mean that which is ratson approvable by the Lord of a God. And when you are doing this, your body should be manifested in the terms pertaining to the great Agate Sune, the divine goodness. And therefore we have been said in Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3, by renovating the standards of your thinking and a Lord God's ideal shepherd, make your life as a living sacrifice unto my Christ, so that you can know what is good, what is perfect and what is acceptable in the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. So the word is very specific for us. What is our flesh? Why are we in this flesh? So in order to marvel this flesh to the presence of the glorious glory as a living sacrifice to the Lord of a God of a sweet smelling savour to him, the role of the pastor teacher comes with authority. If the historical name could be pastor, shepherd, the official title for him will be always the teacher. Where many people don't understand about that the two persons, the fourfold ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is not the fivefold ministry. The translations will lead you to hell. Go back and dig in the original languages of the scriptures, what the word says. Don't put a mask of hypocritical one in your standards and think as if you have known the scriptures. Go back and dig. If you haven't gone to great theological colleges, you have the neology upon your knees. Wherever you are, kneel down in the presence of the Lord of our God and ask Lord God the Father to have with you a right and true fellowship. And it is the will or the duty of God the Father, irrespective of your geographical location, to provide you those great, bona fide, gifted male spiritual pastor teachers who have been there to teach to you the truth in Christ. 
Therefore, we read the fulfillment of the words of Matthew 7, 7. Seek, knock and search. The Lord words is always alive and powerful. This is not a document which has been given for the Old Testament, neither the things pertaining to the church in the first century. This is the only word of the Lord of our God to be called from the eternity past to eternity future. And as per Deuteronomy 29, 29, the things that have been needed for the earth, they have been given, they have been revealed. And therefore, we read yesterday in Psalms 147, verses 19 and 20. He nagged to us. Nagged meant to say what? Through the holy prophets and the holy apostles. And now we are having the burden of the pastor teacher. And since many people don't understand about this work, they are just trampling along to realize that they are the prophets, they are the apostles, they are the reverends, they are the right reverends, they are the doctorates. But never take the duty of the pastor teacher. They also call themselves as brothers. What is the meaning of brothers? The right duty if you are standing in the pulpit to preach the right word of the Lord of our God. It is your bona fide duty. Given for you from the head of the department of the church to carry and to make everyday disciples. Everyday disciples. Everyday disciples. Training them up from milk to bread. From bread to meat. And that's what our Lord's ideal pastor teacher is all about. The one who always engages in didactic ministry, feeding the saints on great isagogical, categorical and exegetical expository preaching, giving them always the rich food of the word of the Lord of a God. Giving them always the rich food. The rich food. The plausias in the Greek. Abundant, bountiful. That's why in Hebrews 11 we read, Time is insufficient. That's what we are looking. The failure of the right pastor teacher. They may think 40 minutes is enough, or, 20, or 30 minutes is enough to teach every week. And they think that's enough. Again, we shall take some crooked stories into our mind and we can come back with our sharers of teachings and with the great oratory methods and we can teach the flock. No, not at all. The great pain what Apostle Paul writes in Galatians 1.6 The same thing what we can look today in our pulpits as well. Though we graciously teach them to understand what is the right work of the pastor teacher, the men are not interested to take everyday Bible classes. But rather, they want to open up their mouth, not knowing the truth, and they want to see and become a prey to the things pertaining to Pentecostal crowds or Christomatic Gospels. They love to come out and take up their mind and say, it is enough for us. And they are very happy to start up their own individual ministry. I'm not saying that, that the things that they should not do. But realizing the right burden of the word of the Lord of our God demands thorough preparation. The isolated years of my Christ of 18 years from the age of 12 till to the age of beginning of his ministry. It was for preparation. Fulfills Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 7. He went for preparation in the word of the Lord of our God. If Lord of our God could take nearly two decades to be prepared, then how much more we need to be there when we are able to stand up or kneel down and preach the right word of the Lord of our God. Can't you think preparation has been needed? Just don't think last night you had a vision, last night you had a dream and some idiotic teachings have been taught for you through the net and you're coming to listen them and you're coming to expound them to these people and think you're doing the great work. The people may be happy but the word of the Lord of our God concerning to my Christ is never. We have great TRB, the Telugu Reference Bible and I wish my people who are going in Telugu would go back and take those exegetical thoughts and rightly divide the word of the Lord of God and expound the truth. But they don't love to look. They love to look upon their own confidence and they love to say the thanksgiving is the spear of entire love of the Lord. That's true. And from there on they want to talk about the prejudiced minds of the people. And forgetting the mystery doctrine which has to be laid very straight. 
the simple purpose of you being kept alive to be the witnesses of this truth says Isaiah chapter 43 the same prayer prayed for us in John chapter 17 that they should know either that they should understand and establish thoroughly because they should realize only Yahweh Elion Elohim is the only Savior before the daylight could be formed he was the one who existed when these things have been said for us to talk and to teach that we should be the witnesses of his truth for which cause we have been born and the question being raised by Pontus Pilate to be answered by us that the church age believers were having my sperm in our tongues in our local languages to call because the seed being translated in the English will misguide you of 1 John 3 9 in the original Greek it's sperma 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 the world in search of making their enlightenment to realize about their gods or become yogis or become some the way how they could call particularly in my country India they love and to realize and they want to teach the preservation of their sperms there are so many authors in the YouTube who could expound to you the importance of that semen how it will develop from the blood and it will end up into the bone marrow and that bone marrow will give and cause them to have that semen and semen is the great power for them and semen is nothing but the sperm and in fact in the Igmantak Chia, the man who knows a lot of value about these things in his own traditions he talks he says even Buddha or some other man on this earth, they also preserved. Then they became the enlightened one. And they say if you don't ejaculate for over 12 years, then you will become a man to understand whatever we speak in the word. You will become a man having glow in your eyes upon your cheeks. You will become a man to be in the terms pertaining to these worldly affairs concerning that you will be dead and he says you will become a man who has understood everything thoroughly and you are the enlightened one that's what they want to say <laughs> the world in search of that sperma preservation of it if they could think they could become the enlightened ones if they think they could understand the things pertaining to such and such if they could think if they could open up their mouth and talk a man who is in such great charming force of energy or magnetism who has taken into sex transmutation of his power and if they think they can do great things on this earth and they could be served as guards on this earth how much more you and I as an ordinary believer in Christ forget about the physical sperms but realize upon the things pertaining to the spiritual sperm of Christ which has been given for us how much more we have to preserve it doesn't he say for us you can do greater things than me doesn't he say for us when the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God will come he will guide you into all truth and depending upon that truth you can trample Satan under our feet doesn't you mean to say that you could be like the way how our Lord our God intended to walk like Christ and yet you do not know the value of the word of the Lord our God wherewith we have to grow up like Christ Preserving in us the word of the Lord of our God is what we are preserving the seed of Christ in us the sperm of Christ in us And we are emulating in us the character of Christ when this unbelievers in the darkened mind of their thinking They are searching to become yogis or yogas in those terms And they want to be like gods to these people and many people follow their teachings How much more every believer ought to be under the privilege of equal privilege and opportunity given to them in this church age because by default they have the sperm of Christ as 1 John 3 9 and yet wasting your valuable time and souls that is what if you don't recollect and keep in you or collect and keep in you the great word of the Lord of a God there is no chance in your life always you love to have sickness that's what we are talking to you dear God we should be deaf and blind to the world the world reasoning that's what he says in Isaiah 42 in verse number 19 who could be 
Death and blood like my servant, Christ my Lord, set forth for us a pattern. The great things when we walk according to the eyesight of faith and not by the eyesight of this man. Therefore, Apostle Paul is rightly to say for us, we walk by faith and not by sight. When we walk by faith, we know very well what it is and what it has to be. The great upright one in the sight of the Lord of our God to honor his word above his name. And we can have his approval right on. So dear brethren, he says for us, Lord God's ideal pastor, what it is. And he has been marveled when he come back and look in Galatians 1, 6, saying that, Thaumazo, I have been shocked and I have been marveled that how speedily you are being transferred. Thinking that you can start up your own colleges, thinking that you can start up your own missionary works, thinking that you can go and start up your Bible teaching if you don't have this bona fide gift. That's why we need to look upon the Arthematis. The word pertaining to Mark chapter 3 or Acts chapter 4, sorry, not Mark 3. And Acts chapter 4 was 4. When they taught the word of the Lord of a God, Logai, the Arthamato, the Greek word, the numbers, was been increased to 5,000 men. <laughs> What did they teach? They thought only the word as it is. They did not call them for the gimmicks as the people are going through today. I went to such and such church for seven weeks. I was being healed. I went there. I gave a testimony. It was been miracled. It was highly impossible for me to get such post. See how the Lord has made that miracle and healing. Do not gather those people speaking lies. The word itself is the thing which could make the people to come to church. And that too they are of quality, not of quantity. <laughs> That's what many people don't understand. When you go back and teach in the original language of the scriptures with proper exegesis, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, those who haven't understood the right word of the Lord of our God will cause in us a great many indifferences. They themselves cannot open the Bible and read. They themselves cannot understand that they have been succumbed to such prey. But yet they in return teach for us. You shall not discriminate. We are not discriminating anyone by making them our target. We are expounding the truth. And as Second Timothy, we read from chapter number 1, 2, 3 and 4, every time mentioning the name of them who were going astray from the word of the Lord our God. If in the Bible it has been recorded such, then we look upon this man who are opening up their mouths without having the right word of the Lord our God in them. We are targeting not, but we are making the people to be aware of such teachings from those men. Since they don't have proper knowledge, they are opening up their mouth for their only filthy liqueur, for some pieces of bread, or for some handful of barley. Having their confidence in lies, thinking that it is truth, at the same time those who follow that blind man, even they becoming blind will end up in ditch. So we are asking you to get out from such blind man teaching. That's what Apostle Paul says in Romans 16, 17. Those who do not follow this rule, get out from such company. What a privilege it is for us that the word of the Lord of our God has been given and kept long back. If it is in the first century, what we can read, that is in AD. Earlier than that, we can find in the book of Deuteronomy as well. Any prophet who hasn't come to teach to you the right word, who has come presumptuously, you should be the first one to put that man to death. There, there is a capital punishment like of a thing called as death. But here we are not doing that. Because as there is a wheat, there will be also tears. 
some will fall to the chaff depending upon your own ignorance and arrogance to learn the truth to know the truth or at least kneel down and read the bible at least once in your entire life and know the value of the truth you will become a prey for such people thinking that you are following the great team you are following the great congregation you are following the great denominations remember always the straight gate not the narrow gate not the broad gate but the narrow gate very few will love to walk in it says the scripture but they cannot carrying up your cross and coming to the word of the lord of god every day what a determination it requires though there is a death in your family you don't mind but you come can't we find such jealous men to the Lord our God to give everything to the Lord our God and do you not know he is going to pay us back with abundant glory and abundant honor as we honor him he is going to honor us but you have excuse to say putting before the details of life <laughs> the silly details of life will destroy your mind they destroy your mind not to know the truth not to learn the truth not to understand the truth they deviate your mind from the right word and the right teachings. You think you are paying the tithe, it's enough. You think you are coming weekly once and standing in the choir and singing song, that's enough. But never you will understand it's the time for us now to give completely to the Lord because He has purchased us with the precious blood and we are not of our own, says 1 Corinthians 6.19. We have been bought with a very great price. Therefore glorify the Lord of our God in your flesh. The translation of KJV will lead you to talk about the spirit. No. But it says in your body. The outward appearance to the world. And what we ought to be. Greater than these yogis who are thinking. That when they preserve their semen. They can have something great to apply in this world. They, they're capacity of understanding will increase the capacity of making others to believe upon their words it will increase and you know what all the things they want to develop in the vanity of their minds but by default we have the sperm of Christ we have been born in Christ before the foundation of the world we have been born complete in Christ as 1 Corinthians 2 6 where the word telelios meant to say for us we have been born complete and we are having all the privileges. We are having all the equal opportunities to praise and worship the Lord of our God in spirit and in biblical truth. Not a man who has cooked up his thoughts. But what the word says, that's it. Not the man who can think who is doing great ministry by anointing others. No. The great difference between the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit at the moment of salvation being baptized into the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit at all, when we believe in Christ, is been replaced by these people to say, when they lay down their hands, then only they will get the Spirit. That was before the completion of the canon, but right now in the church age, what does it say? Lord God, the Holy Spirit acts in you as a human spirit till you believe in Christ or believe that gospel. Then he, then he regenerates in you the human spirit. And that human spirit has to be trained by the indwelling trinity. That your temple, your body is the temple of the Lord, making a permanent abode in it, sealed until the day of redemption. And your Holy Spirit, which has been there in you now, by that I use the word, the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God, for which we have been transacted, our seal, says Ephesians 1.14, as our must deposit for us. It is he who is now the ruler, The new one, you have been slaves to the new one. The old man is out. So what does he demand? He demands truth in our inward parts. What is his truth? The truth that we should be like Christ. The truth, we have the sperm of Christ. The truth, we shall be conforming to the image of his dear beloved son. For that reason, Galatians 4.19 says, Till Christ could be formed in you, the Morphote teachings. What a privilege it is used only once in the entire New Testament, that Greek word. The necessary details have been there and the 
character of my Christ has to be formed in you. The birth pangs of the pastor teacher producing in you the character of my Christ. And yet what do we find? <laughs> Speedily, taka, swiftly being transformed. Meta tesete. In the time of Galatians 1 6, they transformed or translated into the different gospel which is not by grace in anointed Christ. They changed. In the present Christendom, this man, they have changed. Though the gospel is the same, by believing in Christ you shall be saved, faith alone in Christ alone. This man, they have changed now the entire grace upon grace principle. The first grace being my Christ, the salvation. The second grace where they attack now, the right and true bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher teachings have been replaced by their own gimmicks. And that's how they think they are great in their methodology of life. But we have been called, dear brethren, to give them what is a proof of destruction if they don't believe the truth. In Ezekiel 44, 23, we read, even in the millennium, the teaching of the word of the Lord of God, Kara. The same thing he began in the conspiracy of the pastors which led the failure of them. In Ezekiel 22, 25 and 26, what a great pain it will be for us. The world to exist now in such and such terms. Like the way how Humpty Dumpty being broken and scattered towards the entire parts and no one can put them back. So is the Israelite or the Israel nation until and unless Christ could come and take them back by the whistle, says Zoel. They cannot be put them back. Therefore, Lord of our God stopped them, halted them on the 69th week, and He chose us, the church. The sudden insertion between the 69th and the 70th week, the church. The 10 days program after His 40 days of resurrection appearances before ascending to Christ. The great short span of time in the 10 days. When he was going, he breathed upon them the Holy Spirit of God. If not, they wouldn't have been sustained even those ten days. And the great entry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. On the 58th day, the Pentecost day, the cloven tongues, the tongues representing the fire. And what is that fire? Anything which is not in accord with the word of the Lord of God, whatever you speak. That shall be burnt off. So what is your tongue now? Your tongue is the word of the Lord of our God. Doesn't you know what Colossians 4, 6 says, seasoned with salt? Doesn't you know what First Peter 4, 10 and 11 says for us? Open your mouth with the divine oracles of the word of the Lord of our God. Doesn't you know that the mouth of the righteous one is the great pond of life? That's why we have been given the tongues of fire. Not gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and talking along in tongues as the way the Pentecostal crowds have transformed themselves. The great failure of the Israelites has now been applicable for us. Because the pastor teachers have failed their work and yet we have great examples of the Old Testament to recorrect our life. To be as opposed to one virgin or one husband as a chaste virgin to the Lord. That's why the right duty of the pastor teacher says... To make every believer perfect and complete, Colossians 1, 24-29 in comparison to Jeremiah 3, 15 or Acts 20, 28 to declare to them the entire counsel of the Lord of our God for which cause Ephesians 4, 8-13 through 13 has been given for us to make every believer to come to the perfect knowledge of the word of the Lord of our God, perfect epinosis knowledge. Not some standards of what you can think they are teaching, not at all. 
every believer to be perfect and complete. Why? Because whenever we open up our mouth, it has to be seasoned with the grace of the word of the Lord of our God. Because we have been called to be not only the light, but also the salt principle. What is the light? Because we are the representatives of the light of the word of the Lord of our God, who was light before the day light could come into existence. And it says in John, and it says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. As long as he is on this earth. So we are now being given the principle of light and salt. So we have to be the light of the word of the Lord of our God to this people. And therefore Philippians 2, 14 and 15 teaches to us. In the midst of this powers and crooked nation generations. I, Paul, that's what he says. Taking the right word of the Lord of our God. To shine in the midst of them as a light luminaries. Where are we like the light? Where are we like the salt? The exact failure of the past dispensation reflects in our thinking today. So he says in Ezekiel 22, 25, the failure of them, the conspiracy of them. And he gives the right order of them work in Leviticus chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. What the right bona fide gift of the pastor teacher during that time, if it could be the priest, what it is to make them the Lama disciples, which is nothing but Mantano plus Didasco. Mantano to make them disciples, Didasco to teach. One Hebrew word is equivalent to the two Greek words. Mantano plus Didasco. And does he stop there? He gives a great caution of warning for us again. Hosea 4 6. My people are destroyed for what? For the lack of knowledge. You have rejected the word of the Lord of God, so I will reject you to become my priests. Or to be my priest representing. Dear brethren, take it granted, depending upon that principle, if you are a pastor teacher and if you don't teach rightly the word of the Lord of our God, then you have been rejected by the Lord of our God to handle his word. No doubt you may survive on this earth handling his word, thinking for your belly to be your God. But remember, when you stand in the presence of the Lord of our God, you will have a tough time, very, very tough time. He did not spare Moses. How much more you could be to stand when you don't honor his word. Doesn't the great Psalm 119 teach for us to honor his word, to honor his word above his name. In Psalms 132, doesn't it teach for us that Lord God himself has honored his word above his name. Then who are we to withhold it back? As per Hosea 4, 6, they have rejected my word. So I have rejected them to be my priests. Are my shepherds of that time because the work for them is to make Lama disciples. And do you want to look what is the failure of them? In Lamentations 2.10 we find they have failed to expose the gala exposition of their sins. And sowing to the wind they got war wind. They fail to guard, they fail to nagad, they fail to expound. So they have been taken care, says Lamentations 3 again, in verse number 10 and 11, by the lion and the bear. The same thing again we read in Lamentations 4, 22, or particularly verse number 20. They have been called to serve under the shadow of my Christ to those nations. If they were under the shadow, but now we are the token of perdition, token of punishment for them to show forth what is the failure. And what was the failure of that time? Opening our Bible, if you have, to Lamentations chapter 5. The failure has caused them the proof which they left behind, not in great reproval, but in great reproach, pudenta, which is a shame, a rebuke, or a reproach. We find in James, in, in Lamentations chapter 5, it really prears our heart. Considering how they have fallen, they rejected the word of the Lord of our God, no truth in them. Our Lord of our God has rejected them to be the priests, though their wives have been sent to other men, yet they did not correct us. Jeremiah 8.10, they haven't heard, they haven't learned. This men are happy teaching about 
the Holy Spirit of God. This man I have been teaching about the things pertaining to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John Gospels. But this man I haven't gone till deeper to look how great is the wrath of the Lord of God upon those shepherds who haven't divided the word of the Lord of God accurately. And yet they say we are great renowned. Let them be happy. We don't ask them to be cursed. We only ask them to be changed. Follow the narrow gate. It's a straight gate. It's a tough gate. Come every day and teach. That's the right work of the pastor teacher. If you have been blessed by the gifts of those men, you enjoy your life. We don't ask you to not to enjoy. But don't make that as a key for you to always enjoy your life by depending upon their offerings. That's wrong. Apostle Paul didn't do so. He said, my boasting in Christ, which I have thought freely, should not be hindered. So I haven't taken anything from you. That's the only great thing that I have hid from you or not taken from you. And that's what he says. That's the only great damage I have done to you by not taking your money. So the point what we want to tell dear brethren all the time, wake up to the right teaching. If not... The pudenda, the rebuke, the reproach, the shame will be upon you. So we read in verse number 1 of Lamentations 5. Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. Do you know how this has been structured? In Lamentations you find 22 verses representing each alphabet of the Hebrew. And coming to chapter number 3, you find three times. I was, I was asking 44 times. It has to be in the terms then, 66 times. Because when David bought 200 instead of 100, the 77 quote what we are teaching, kneeling down and reading the Bible seven times, the flyer of the heaven, the two unclean beasts slaving out the lion and the bear, and the seven times kneeling down and writing the Bible, at least seven, 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 three times. That is 21 times. But here we have for the respect of Psalms 119, 22 alphabets to write 22 times. And if the grace of the Lord of our God is more upon us to write 44 times, what else we can do on this earth? If it is still great grace for us, write 66 times. That is 22, 22, 22 each. That's what Lamentations 3. And you find in chapter number 4, 22 verses. And again in chapter number 5, you find 22 verses. So here, you find, remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Consider and behold what he's talking about. Our reproach, charpets, the rebuke, the shame. What he has done to the chosen ones of that time. How much more, he says in Romans chapter 11, to be aware if he did not spare his own, you have been taken by the grafting process. How much careful you need to be. If not, he will speedily cut off. That's the reproach. Cut off in the sense you will not lose your salvation if you are a believer in Christ. Once saved, always saved. The problem with us is we don't have proper... Greek construction of them in the perfect tense and the things pertaining to perfect continuous tense. And that's why you don't believe in my Christ, that once saved you have been always saved. If you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the very next thing will be the controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to train you up in the word of the Lord of our God. That's it. No speaking in tongues. And daily cleansing out the garbage which is there in your soul. So we find over here to teach us the reproach which has come upon us. And that reproach saying to the point, our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens, the failure of the right teaching, the failure of the right bona fide work of the male spiritual pastor teacher, what it will cause upon you besides sickness. If you are not corrected by the sickness in the five cycles of disciplines being mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26, 
the first thing warning discipline for you in the terms pertaining to your health if you correct there it's good and great come back your suffering will be converted into blessing as lord of our god made the things pertaining to be out of apostle paul life who was out from geographical will and operative will of god the father yet he made those five years in the prison to write us the prison epistles the mystery doctrine of the church age followed by the principle of use of beyond one in the pastoral epistles that we have something great even the one great epistle philemon what we read so he says the failure of the pastor teacher will turn to strangers your houses to aliens you may ask how it has been related because they are representing the lord in the direct ministry of the lord to teach to you and if you don't obey his word whether you hear or perish that is left to you you are not going to change evolution from negative to positive many men who are trying their lives to teach to you the truth at the cost of being counted as the things pertaining to their name and their fame and their life they counted as filth and they are the most glorified one in Christ do you know why because the world may not recognize the truth but we are here to do the work of the lord of a god we are here to only glorify my Christ to the best because it is he who leads us that's what apostle paul says it is not i who works but lord god the holy spirit who worketh in me mightily it is he who leads us and guides us to be prepared every day what the world recognizes is only to the history pages of this earth but we need to record our name in the pillar of the heaven says revelation 2 in the pillar of the temple of my lord i will record thy name and those history pages will never erase what is man they have only breath in their nostrils what they fit for except having in them the urine and excreta which smells when they piss out in your presence that's what their mind is so you want to impress those men before those men be impressed and take their likes and take their comments and to be happy or you want to be in the presence of the lord of a god in the history pages of the heaven and do the things that are right in the sight of the lord of a god whether they may be here or so for years or whether they may be like me alone and recording and keeping for you a reference for the future it is better for us all the time to love the lord of a god with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our strength rather than loving the world and the details of this world which says in jobs in job chapter 1 and 2 naked i came naked i go you cannot get anything for you this earth. you cannot make up anything on this earth which you can take back to the heaven this simple principle what the man is not able to listen and understand constantly greedy constantly looking for money and though they do not understand the bible says for them root cause for all evil is money yet they love for money and die for money kill for money and every mannerism of the power lust they want to enjoy this earth what for to die and to speedily perish that's what he says in first samuel 230 those who honor me i will honor those who consider my teachings as wild and worthless The word of the Lord of God says, "I shall crush them out speedily." How speedily you change from the right track of the word of the Lord of God. Besides, having been given for us such a great warning in the word of the Lord of God not to change, speedily you will enjoy the great punishment of the Lord. Count it as number one warning discipline. What we are giving. If you don't believe this warning discipline you will be taken into the intensified stage of discipline which is taking you till to the point of death and releasing you at least that time be obedient for the word of the lord of a god not to have angry upon your parents but to be obedient in my country india contemporary with me 
any one of their parents might have not taught them the importance of the word of the Lord of a God. If you truly love the Lord of a God and fear the Lord of a God, it is you who would have walked in the path, abiding constantly and faithfully. Because Lord of a God diligently seeks and searches in you. If ever you are worthy to walk, if ever you are capable of walking, if ever you can walk no matter whatever it is or you will depart from the truth. And if you would walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit you would have trained your mind to be the greatest ones in this world and the worlds to come. And yet you think the intensified stage of discipline has been given by you because of the failure of your parents is purely your mistake. The word says, honor your father and mother. The greater you fail to honor my Lord. That is his word. You are not worthy enough even to be counted as Christian. The intensified stage of discipline will make you to realize the failures what you have done. The failures what you enjoy to sow by rejecting the word of the Lord of God, by giving the word of the Lord of God number one priority in your life. And even at that time, if you think you cannot change, the Lord of God knows very well, though you survive on this earth using His grace in waste, or using it in vain, the grace of the Lord of God. Like the way how scar tissue filled up in Ananias and Sapphira over a short spell of time. And Lord of God seemed fit, they are not worthy, so He erased them out, sin unto death. In the case of Saul, it took large time, but in the case of Ananias and Sapphira, it took a short time, yet then too they did not meet the Lord's need, and yet He removed them out. He did not spare his own son on the cross. Though he was not sin, he carried the sin of the entire world. Then how much more you and I, taking the name of the Lord of God as Christians, not producing in us the character of my Christ, not walking according to his will, not honoring his word, rejecting his word all the time, do you think he's going to keep you with the things pertaining to sound health, sound peace, sound joy? Don't ever mistake these things. Our Lord of God has called for us an approval to them who walk tamiyim. But those who are twisted, crooked, perverse, and perverted, ikesh, to them they are in the presence of the Lord of God like abomination, detestable things. He rejects them. He doesn't need them. He throws them out. Until and unless you come with rebound, until unless you renovate the standards of your thinking, living out your crooked ways and following the straight, upright ways of the Tamim character in Christ. And that's not possible in overnight. Repentance can be, change of mind can be. But your practical life will again go back to insist and seek and search that which is lies all the time. Because it has been already accustomed to such living. Pleasures. That's why the greatest enemy for you is your own flesh. If your own flesh has not been crucified with Christ, you cannot know what it is to be crucified in Christ. And that's how the men are, without having the knowledge that they have the sperm of my Christ, they should walk like Christ. If you are in Christ, you need to crucify yourself. This all is in nature. And do not worry about the past, look upon ahead for the future. That's what Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.8. Forgetting those things which are behind and looking forward ahead for the things which have been which has been kept for me, the crown for Christ, which has been laid down for me, so that I need to pursue and take the excellence in knowledge, the superior knowledge of Christ. And whatsoever I have achieved till now, I count it as dung. Even that excreta would be useful. As Ezekiel 3 writes, for the fuel. If it were not so, that Ezekiel asked the Lord, I haven't been defiled from my youth with such things. Lord would have told him to continue with the things pertaining to the excreta. He intended not to change his word. Except that clause. And he gives a condition over there of an exceptional clause to say, Okay, cook it with cow dung rather than the human excreta. At least that human excreta has been useful for some fuel. That's what we can call. So Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.8, 
in front of the superior knowledge of my Christ what has been laid down for me forgetting those things which are behind I am running forward ahead to take that knowledge and the crown which has been laid down for me and for that cause whatever details have been there for me in the past or what I have achieved till now even not the experience of yesterday I count them as done day by day we need to grow up what we change in our spirit and soul through the word of the Lord of our God, that's what stands forever. Not your anthropomorphical changes in the terms pertaining to your metamorphisms can be for you to think you have been a saint, to think that you are a great one or XYZ. No, not at all. It is what the renovation of the standards of your thinking in your inner mind makes the difference. And for that cause, Apostle Paul says, I forget those things which are behind, I run forward, I had for the things pertaining to the great word of the Lord of our God. And that's what the right work of the pastor teacher ought to be in the church age, to make every believer to seek those things that are of the above and not of this earth, by putting to that necrosity the things of this flesh, the things of this earth. And every believer should give number one priority for the great word of the Lord of our God. If not, Lamentations chapter 5 will be their faith. He says in verse number two, our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless, our mothers are widows. We have drunken our water for money, our wood is sold unto us, our necks are under persecution, we labor and we have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians, that is what your enemies, and to the Assyrians, to be satisfied with bread. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. That's why Deuteronomy 6 is so essential for the parents to teach to the children. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doeth deliver us out of their hand. We got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. They ravished the women in Zion and made, and the maids in the cities of Judah. Princes are hanged up by, the, by their hands. The faces of elders were not honored. They took the young man to grind and the children fell under the wood. The elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. The joy of our heart is seized, our dance is turned into mourning. The crown is fallen from our head. Warn to us that we have sinned. Here you realize you have sinned. For this our heart is faint, for these things our eyes are dim. Because of the mountain of Zion which is desolate, the foxes walk upon us. But in Jeremiah 33 12, he says, the desolate, the desolate places will be taken care of by the priests who shall feed them with great pasture to the flock. Thou, O Lord, remainest forever thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore, you have, dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us, thou art very wroth against us, because they have rejected the word of the Lord of our God. And that's what we find in Hosea 4 6 in comparison to Micah 3 verses 9 through 11 teaching to them. If the right pastor teacher doesn't understand Micah 3 8, he will fall to teach for higher and he will teach for wages and from there on dear brethren he comes to violate the laws of the word of the lord of a god zephaniah 3 4 but the lord of a god is just in the midst of his people to teach them the attributes of the word of truth every day morning by morning coming to them in the great exposition of his light which is nothing but the word of the lord of a god to those bona fide gifted pastor teachers in the present christendom and then we find Malachi chapter 2. The lips of the priest should possess knowledge and the people should go there to learn knowledge. But since they have rejected there, our Lord our God concludes in 
Lamentations 5.22 Thou has utterly rejected us. What it is if you don't have doctrine in you as well today? Do you think Lord of our God will accept you? Without the word of the Lord of our God to honor his word above his name and what is to honor? The three words what we read in Matthew chapter 4 verses 4 through 10 Apocrite, Fime and Legai Apocrite to conclude to oneself and to take into mind man does not live by bread alone but by every remata declaration of the word of the Lord of our God through that time Christ our Lord of our God being taught by the Holy Spirit of the Lord of our God in his humanity by, by fulfilling Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 7 today it is the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to teach from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 and that today the morning one hour evening one hour and then he says in verse number 7 the female to shine out the thought and he says we shall not tempt the Lord our God because it is he who is capable of all the things what he has said then what it is for us to put to test our Lord we do not like Gideon the way have they put we would only believe and walk like the way have David walked though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we don't fear anything because it is the Lord our God who shall guide us even there as well the same thing what he writes in Psalms 147 and or, or in the Psalms 139 though I make my bed in the hell yet thy hand searcheth me over there that's what it says in Psalms 139 and the same thing O Lord we the same thing we need to be aware for the Lord of our God to say we shall not tempt our Lord there is nothing that could be far from him there is nothing that could be concealed from him it is he who has given for us the word and he says in Proverbs it is the pleasure of the Lord of our God to conceal the matter and it is the pleasure for the kings to open up that matter and we are the church age believers as kings to learn that word and to enjoy that word and to cherish and nourish in that word and then he says in the last temptation the things pertaining to Satan when it shows the world many of the pastors are following today the world and not the word of the Lord our God to say get thee away it is only the Lord our God whom we shall proscune and it is the Lord our God to whom we shall pay our latter races which is nothing but the divine service the divine service for us in the church age the use of beyond spiritual life the highest and the best life designed for us in the high calling of the Lord our God, that best life designed only for those who are believers in Christ and not for everyone. Because we are taking to understand if morality is the world what it thinks, then through spirituality, the highest thing being virtue is a great one then what the morality of the legal standards of this world is all about so concluding to our mind what are the words of the lord of our god living our life according to the word of the lord of our god experiencing the truth according to the word of the lord of our god is what we wait and watch for the deliverance of the lord of our god and not to take our own decisions so dear brethren the only thing what we need to do carry up your cross every day and follow my christ and you believe it or not those who walk in the presence of the Lord of our God uprightly, the Tamim nature, his approval is there to fulfill the desires of your heart. What it is, the glory of the Lord of our God, to see his own children being taken care. And he says for them, if your father asks you fish, does he get you snake? If he asks you the bread, does he get you stone? How much more for the Holy Spirit of work in the hypostatic union? But for us now, as the principle of a father to his children, that is what as we call Abba Father to our Lord of our God, if your own son on this earth or daughter, if there is any danger for them from the surroundings, will he not protect them? Definitely is going to protect you. In the same manner, Christ our Lord of our God protects us from these false doctrines as well. Satan can influence you only by false doctrines. It cannot teach you the truth because it doesn't know the truth, neither it can abide in the truth. Therefore, John 8, 31 and 32, if you abide in the truth and continue in the truth, then only you are my disciples, continuing that process. And therefore, our Lord of our God says, without me you can do nothing, John chapter 15. And if he's the wine and we are the wine dresses of the Lord of our God, then let's be to produce much fruit, more fruit, abundant fruit. And that's what we have in the word of the Lord of our God, to become a proof of destruction to them who don't believe the truth. And that proof should be for a double destruction with a double proof. 
because we have the Old Testament saints given for us, the prophets, the New Testament doctrine to the apostles of the mystery doctrine. So we are not only living a life of the things pertaining to the Old Testament, failure, overcomings, but also we are living them to show forth the time for us is to communicate, not in the terms pertaining to parables or proverbs, but the time to communicate for us in the terms pertaining to the great word, the right word of the Lord of our God, which is in the mystery doctrine of the church age. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine essence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in learning the truth. So which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to care us earth on Lagan. And that meant to say, in season, out of season, being prepared to preach the right word of the Lord of our God, the mystery doctrine of Colossians 4, 2 through 4, so that the hearers, if they are not there, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So, dear brethren, we are answerable to the Lord of our God and not to this man. So think and consider about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Because many of the people are even worried about the softies, softies of this world. But we are not worried about the softies. We are worried upon every word to be exegeted, every word to be taught, every word to be isolated, every word to be categorized in the terms pertaining to exegetical thoughts. And we are worried only to teach nothing but the truth. Whether the world may love it or not, we are not from the world we are out of the world says the scripture we have been kept in the world so that we shall not follow the pattern of the world says Ephesians 4 17 but we shall renovate the standards of our thinking and learn Christ learning Christ is the ultimate principle to teach Christ is the ultimate principle and Lord God the Holy Spirit work to the bona fide gifted pastor teachers is to form in you the character of Christ and that's what the great principle is all about forming in us the character of Christ is the ultimate reality in our lives and that's what confirming to the image of his dear beloved son and having to enjoy if Lord of our God could be with us who could be against us and if you grieve and squelch and deceive Lord God the Holy Spirit and wax Lord God the Holy Spirit you will have a tough time on this earth you are just taking up your journey in the march death beat of Satan when it is playing the music and you are not in harmony with the Lord of our God to teach and to learn what is it the right truth whether you believe these things or reject these things that is left to you but you are answerable to the lord as i'm answerable to the lord to blow the trumpet and blowing the trumpet doing the work of a watchman we are doing it to teach to you the entire counsel of the lord of our god day by day word upon word line upon line and to see to be pure from your blood which could be upon your own head and that's it and we don't need anything from you apart from you getting to become like Christ, perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of the word of the Lord our God. Think about these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with you through the word. Father, we pray from this message what we have spoken to this people, O Lord, they could come back and understand that we have the sperm of Christ, we are to walk like Christ. It is no way excusable for us if we don't walk like Christ. Help us to train them up more and more in their word and make them to realize what is thy great glory given for us, bestowed and kept in eternity past as we come back home, the spirit and soul of us being matching to your resurrection body and in nothing to be ashamed and for that joy which have kept us alive in this flesh to them to teach and to train them up to become the proof of destruction to this man who haven't believed but yet to Lord those who have believed for great salvation unto Christ at the same time greater epinosos believer in Christ so that father thy will of First Timothy 2, 4, to be fulfilled, none to perish, but everyone should come to the thorough knowledge of the truth. Help us to train them up more and more. The failure of the work of the pastor teachers in the past dispensation, which has been occurring as well in the present dispensation, O Lord, yet give them the right mind to understand that the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher is to make them to be perfect and complete in the thorough knowledge of Lord's glory. So, Father, we commit everything into the mighty hands, such as diligently, and see if there is an offensive way, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. And those who are listening to them, provide grace, O Lord, so that you can have to understand thy glory what we are teaching every day for more than one hour. 
In Christ's matchless prayer, as gracious name we pray, Father, help us to do through through you as you're operating in us to do thy work. In Christ's name we are sovereign Lord, all these things. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these times. Amen.